Howdy cowboys. What's up people? This is another have a coke and a smile run. Um, I was thinking, a thought just came to mind about mathematics. Uh, you know, I uh, my junior high school teacher, she was big on us learning mathematics and being able to apply it in the real world. So we she would bring newspapers to school and we would look at sales, prices of stuff, and then she would figure out like, which one are you getting a deal on? And then you realize that that word, S-A-L-E, is not really a good word. That's a curse word. So for me, whenever something goes on sale, I usually check the expiration date, um, the quality of the, what's on sale, and whether it's a late model that, or that's been sitting on the shelf for the longest. So they're just trying to get rid of it, dump it off on me. Well, this is what I learned from mathematics as applying it to the real world. Now, I learned, I think it was the guy who wrote the Da Vinci Code. In one of his books, not the Da Vinci Code, was another one. Where one character in this book has said that mathematics is the language of the universe. And I agree wholeheartedly. Mathematics mathematics is constant. 2 plus 2 is for every spot on this earth and every language. No matter what you call it, 2 plus 2 is 4. And I also learned something from studying to be a teacher. And I noticed the effect not... Well, this is what I surmise. It's my observation. I draw this conclusion. Excuse me. That ir irrational people aren't very good at mathematics. And I, I bet my life that the people who I could get along well with and have a, a, a discussion, on, especially on opposing views, they are usually very well versed in the language of mathematics. They're very fluent in it. And uh, it was board mass in junior high school when my math teacher, the first seventh grade math teacher, who wasn't much of a math teacher, but thank God my mind exploded in 10th grade with my math teacher. And I had to straight till 12. There's a God. Anyway, I learned one thing from him, board mass. And I asked him, is that always how you have to do it? Yes. Always, you do the first thing first, the second thing second, the third thing third. And he said that was a life lesson right there. I already spoke about this in another run. But I just wanted to talk about it more because I observe people's behavior when they drive. Right? I hate to judge, but I know people like to say, oh, only God can judge me. Well, maybe, but your actions condemn you. You cannot strike me as a rational person who knows that you put the horse first, then you attach the car. If you're blowing through the stop sign, you're blowing the red light, you, you're not obeying the speed limit, you, you, you're making a, one, there's two lanes, you're making the third one. Like, I'm like, the road is set up for a reason. You cannot do just as you please. Uh, my mind always goes back to my math teacher in seventh grade who said that board mass is there because there are things that you do in mathematics in order for it to work properly that you must do first. Then the second thing is done second and the third thing third and so on and so forth. And I, and I realize that people that are Deficient in mathematics conduct themselves in a certain way. Uh, gentlemen, I want you to know in the Emperor's Club, you are going to be fluent in mathematics. If it means you spend an extra hour a day, five days a week until you achieve mastery, guess what? That's what it's going to do. And I learned from studying mathematics, because I love mathematics, but 
doing the first thing first, the second thing second, the third thing third, that carried over into the rest of my life. So, like first things first. Yes, I need a car to get around. But why would I spend fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars on a car and I'm paying rent? That makes absolutely no sense. I would think I would want to own my own home first before I own a luxury vehicle. So that was my goal. In fact, while I was in college, I saved the money for college and I rode a bicycle. I wasn't going to spend ten, fifteen thousand dollars on a, oh, a car when I need to pay for my education. So I bought my bicycle, I hopped on it to go to work and I hopped on it to go to school. And if I absolutely positively had to go anywhere, I, I would borrow my, uh, my, my mother's car. Why? Because the first thing first came into play. I need a car, but a better investment of my time would not be a luxury car, it would be owning my own home. It doesn't have to be a mansion, but if I can find fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars for a car, I might as well get a house. I don't, I don't need anything huge. It's just me, and that's one thing my grandmother taught me too. You buy a house and make sure it's in your name before you get married. And later on, as I got older, I understood why. And now the laws change where the young, the young ladies, when they get a divorce, they want. Everything you had before you met her and before you got married. But anyway, that's another topic for another day. But see, I was taught this to put the horse first, then the car. And gentlemen, nothing prepares your mind for doing the first thing first and the last thing last, and everything in between in the proper order, like mathematics. People, you've got to study mathematics. You cannot run away from it. Or maybe I'm biased because I love mathematics and I see the world through the eyes of mathematics. That's probably why I see it the way I do. If I'm wrong, let me know. But this is my observation. Like, I'm bound by it. I, I can't put the car before the horse, even if I want to. In fact, I, can't, I don't even think about doing that. I don't even think about putting the, the card before the horse. Everything is always the first thing first. Aha, uh -huh. we, we put on the side. Everything is always being the first thing first. Everything is always being the first thing first. Yes, I'm on a hill trying to make a U turn. Um, all right, no. No, no, like what I was saying, now, uh, let's say we break it down. Let's say if I go to get my first house. Let's say I do qualify for a $200,000 house. But I have $50,000 in my pocket. I am not going to go to pay mortgage on a $200,000 house when with $50,000 I could get a $100,000 house and save my money and invest it and let that money make money, excuse me, for 10 years and then I move on to a bigger house. And while, if I can, I would sell it or put it on rent and have money coming in. While, yes, while I'm paying the mortgage, the, the house I had before will pay, help um, defer the cost. And thus, I can have what I want without altering my lifestyle and the crushing death. Anyway, that's me, gentlemen. I gotta go. Thank you. Sorry about the pauses.